Hello everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build. Um, that is not a complete build. Today's one day build is a piece of a project and it is a deep, deep cut. One of the very first show and tells I ever did uh, on tested.com, which is now like almost a decade ago, was of an Iron Man suit that I had purchased on eBay and then done some modifications on. And it was specifically an Iron Man Mark I suit. This is still a suit that I'm working on. Uh, after that show and tell, that suit went into storage and it has sat in storage for a long time. And I pulled it out recently. I was in storage organizing stuff and I pulled it out and I thought, this is a good looking suit. This, this should be a thing. This, I wanna get this puppy up and running. It's a lovely suit. I would like to wear it to a con. That's still a while away because I've never actually put this suit on. Um, but here is the main chest piece of this suit. And I, okay, how do I walk you through this? I found it in storage about three months ago. I mean, found it. I always knew it was there, but like in storage, moving stuff around, I came upon the stack of boxes that held this guy. And I started thinking, eh, I could start to work on that. That would be fun. Uh, it's cast, uh, slush cast in, I think, onyx or some similarly resilient uh, 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 urethane resin. Um, it's really nicely done. It's not very canon. Um, there's a lot of aspects to it in which the maker made efficiencies for casting, but it a very, very, very few humans would be able to discern just where it's not that canon. It's it's a great looking costume. Um, and I, I will wear it to a con at some point. But before I do, well, it needs, it needs an arc reactor. And when I first bought this like 10 years ago, arc reactors were an expensive bit of kit. There weren't many people making uh, replicas of them, but now, well, you can buy one like this here on, uh, on Amazon for about 30, 39 bucks. We'll include a link in the, uh, in the comments. Uh, and this one even has some lighting effects. It actually changes its lighting over time. It goes through some dimming stuff. There's, there's a whole board and a performance in that, which I dig. I dig that about you, Jerry. Um, so I am going to be doing the arc reactor in the center of the Mark I's chest, along with the, uh, uh, all of the commensurate dressing, uh, et cetera. And then I am also uh, going to be working on the back. And back here, and again, this isn't canon. Technically, this should be farther over here. There's a bunch of other stuff that's going on, but it is close enough for summer stock. Um, so what I'm gonna do, there's a magneto in here in the costume and it turns. And I have a, um, a beautiful little 60 RPM motor here, which is just about perfect for me. It's super quiet gearhead motor. I'm going to build in a fake magneto. Um, and a little power system into this so that when you flip a couple of switches, the magneto goes on and the arc reactor goes on. And that will be, uh, that will be today's one day build. Kitting out the electronics and mechanical work for my Iron Man Mark I chest. Let's get started. Now, I've already done a little work on here. I replaced the cylinder here. I redid a bunch of wiring. I cut some stuff out. I put some stuff back in. I added this whole bottom section. Uh, I've actually permanently attached the shoulders, which is more accurate to the original costume. There's some stenciling on here to do, and I will get to that at some point, maybe today, we'll see. Um, but it's mostly about the Magneto and the arc reactor. Yeah, it's gonna be nice looking. <laughs> The reason I want to make it a plug and play unit is because cosplay is cosplay with mechanics and electronics is difficult. You're often working under tight time constraints and there is a, a, a proclivity to glue and to make quick decisions to get stuff done. But those can have compounding effects when your electronics break down and everything's glued together. 
So I'm trying, I try with my cosplays to have as much modularity as possible. I'll tell you something I'm still looking for, tiny little two connector. I, actually, I found those recently. Sorry, I realized that was a desire and I recently found it. Um, but so I am going to try and make this Magneto unit a completely self-contained press fit plug and play that will go in here. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to cut this out on my bandsaw. So what scraps should you save? Always save square scraps. I mean, I don't think anyone in their right mind would throw out a scrap like this, but this is exactly what one should save. And when you're done with the project, take some of the weird offcuts you have and square them off. You'll, you'll thank, your future self will thank you. Okay. I, let's see. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, a note about press fits. If you can get a press fit, take the time to do it. It'll make your gluing so much better on the on balance. So yeah, I am going to, I'm gonna glue this in just like this. And again, this, um, this is Plastrux styrene uh, tubing, and this is acrylic. Those should mate nicely with some weld on number three. Just brush a little bit along the inside border just to get a little bit of the glue in there. This gray stuff, it's um it's not cheap, uh, but Plastruct makes it, I believe, and it is it is one of the go-to materials at Industrial Light Magic. It's like we had so this that comes in like a million diameters. Super useful. There's some of this in many of the Star Wars ships over the years. So now I have this, it's a press fit inside the uh, Magneto housing, and I wanna mount this motor dead center. So I'm gonna chuck this into the lathe and drill a hole that matches, well, that diameter, which is 0 0.47, 0 0.47. I think everybody intuitively understands that a drill bit peels away material there at its tip and carries away that material along the spiral flutes. It's wonderful at doing that. But when you feed this into something like plastic, which can shatter, that front chisel point end can pick up material and it can, if it's drilling through grippy material like acrylic or sometimes brass or other stuff, nylon, um, it can grab and pull itself through like a corkscrew right through that, that spiral flute. And if you've ever tried to drill thin acrylic with a big twist drill, you'll know what I mean. It, everything goes to hell. It's a nightmare. Enter the step drill. This drill cuts also by scraping away material, but instead of ridding itself of that material by using spiral flutes, it scrapes away that material with each, see this, yeah. The leading edge of it, which is that top edge, it scrapes away the material, very different than pulling itself into the material. So step drill with a maximum of half inch, perfect for mounting my motor relatively close to center. And we feed it in. And already, it's made a nice little hole. Now we're just going to widen that out. And I think if you look up there nice and close, you will see, come on, there you go. It's a really nice looking hole. Way better than you could get with a twist drill. Now that sits there nice and center. Yeah, see that? That's great. Now what I wanna do is mark out these holes. I wanna mark out, there's six of them. I don't need all six of those holes. 
really, I only need three of them. Now, I marked all six holes. It's, <laughs> I might be more exacting about this if the mechanical operation was super mission critical, but I think I have some adjustability here. So I wasn't being super precious about it. I'll hand drill these with a step drill. And uh, I, again, I'm looking for some movability here. So I didn't worry too much about and it. All I need is three of these. So if all six don't line up, no problem. I just need three to work. The reason I'm moving around here like this, moving around this circular pattern, is so that the acrylic doesn't get too hot. That's the other thing that can help it crack. I'm just methodically moving my way. Ah, there we go. If you wanna use a cooling fluid for this operation, you totally can. In fact, a great cooling fluid for acrylic is water, of all things. All right, let's see how we did here. Huh. Five are pretty good. I can see that I've got three, four are dead on the money. One is okay and one is total disaster. That's fine. I didn't need them all. I didn't need them all. Let's do some countersinking. For acrylic, I really like this, uh, sorry, this countersink bit with the three flutes on it because it's sort of self-balancing with, um, with the one. This is the other common kind of countersink bit with a single scraping edge as opposed to three. And this tends not to find its own center as well in plastic. That's my experience. Your results may vary. Ah, oh, right. Now, yep, I am doing it. Okay. There we go. Hey, that worked great. I drilled six holes, only two lined up enough to get screws into them, but for this application, totally fine. Again, I like I said, I would have taken more care if, uh, if the results were more mission critical, but given how much adjustability I have in this and how light the load on this motor will be, I'm not worried. I'm not worried, no. Um, this chunk of cast urethane, which I poured into a piece of PVC pipe, will serve as the center spindle on this magneto. Magneto! Uh, wow, look at that, 1.5, freaking exactly to the Within four thou, I want this to take this down to 1.125. So that is, I want to take it in one point, would be 0.375. This little nubbin on here is simply so that I can hold on to it. You will see what I'm talking about.
Here's what I meant when I said I was gonna hold on to this with these collets. This is a 5C collet, sorry, my, I just forgot what kind it was of for a second. Um, and I have this, which is a lovely thing. If you have a mill, you should get one of these. This is a 5C collet holder, and I can take any of my 5C collets, which are made for holding on to uh, sensitive material in the lathe, and I can put it into this block, put a uh, tightening nut on the back, and then I can hold on to this guy, tighten it down, and because I've got a hexagonal block here, I can use this instead of a rotary table to cut six perfect sides on this circle. Yeah, it's a way faster, if you need to do a hexagon, and they also make a square one. I have yet to find an octagonal one, but uh, these 5C collet blocks are a fantastic addition to the milling setup because they allow for a quick, uh, a quick thing like this to, to work quite quite nicely. Uh, so I'm going to chuck this in the lathe and I'm gonna cut six surfaces uh, at that line and that should give me the, uh, uh, the magneto center frame that I'm looking for. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That ain't going nowhere now. And I'm not in danger of running into the collet block. I've got a nice stop on the side of the middle vise, so. have it. A beautiful hexagon cut. Now, a note. Um, this, I think you can, I think careful eyes could see that my resin is a little bit Swiss cheesy. Um, that's because this is old Instacast. And if you don't buy one of those um, casting material savers that sprays nitrogen in before you close up the how do I say this? Okay, <clears throat> the reason this looks like Swiss cheese is because it's old Instacast. Instacast is a type of one-to-one -one urethane uh, two-part casting material that makes a plastic, that what everything in the movie industry is cast out of. And uh, it is hygroscopic. Uh, it wants to absorb water. And when it is old, it tends to, absor it absorbs water every time you open it. You crack open Instacast and, it wants to draw moisture out of the atmosphere. So you wanna crack it, pour it, mix it, and reseal it. And they actually make a product, which is a nitrogen spray. You can spray inside to replace the oxygen that's sitting in that bottle. Uh, so you spray a little nitrogen, and then you cap it, and now you know that there's no moisture or uh, regular breathable air in that container. That's how you extend the life of your casting materials. Sometimes though, when you're working with Instacast, like quick and dirty, you're just burning through it, you're burning through it, and I have this old kit. And so I was using the last of it, and sure enough, it's got some water already in it, and it's got that little Swiss cheesy aspect to it. But it doesn't bother me because this is Iron Man. This is Mark I. This is like parts pulled out of the desert floor from crashed stuff. So uh, I'll be able to manage that aesthetically without any difficulty. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to add a tightening screw that will allow me to uh, that will allow me to uh, tighten this against the motors. The motor has a flat milled on its shaft, so I'm going to do probably a, um, a 1024. You want coarse threads with soft material, uh, so 24 threads per inch is better than 32 threads per inch. I also am going to be putting a hole in the center of each of these faces to receive the magneto uh, wound part that we'll, that we'll make in a few minutes. All right, that is my center. Here is the 1024 tap drill, number 26. I am going to actually use a drill check for this. There we 
go. That's my tap drill for. Uh, that's my tap drill for the tightening against the shaft of my motor there. Now I'm going to drill a center hole uh, for the magneto pieces. And since I'm going to screw those in using quarter 20 bolts, I am going to use a number seven drill. A number seven drill being the tap drill for a quarter 20 tap. All right. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of um, uh, face detailing on this and uh, we're gonna then tap it. The uh, last bit of detailing I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a small tap screw on all six sides on the face because I can see that in one of the reference photos. If this was a mechanical mission critical thing, I would uh, I would be more exacting about the placement of this, but uh, I can just line up this corner with the edge of the vise and I'm within 10 thou and that's plenty for the aesthetics of this thing. So now I'm just going to put a 632 hole in there. There we go, six holes in the face, six holes in the perimeter, and one for tightening this down. That's a 1024, these are quarter 20s, that's a 632. Let's do some tapping. So uh, I've got here a 632 tap, and I'm gonna do these six holes in the top. And, yeah. Oh, great, I'm gonna use a little bit of oil on these. Um, yeah. I, I might be concerned about the oil from my tapping uh, affecting the paint job of this later, but because it's all rusted and it's Iron Man Mark I, I really don't have to worry about paint job inconsistencies. In fact, they're to be welcomed. There we go. I'm just gonna bury some shorty 632s in there and just put an oil every couple of holes just to keep it from Overheating. Okay, so uh, all the all the holes should be tapped. It's all out. I think now uh, I can start to work out what size these magnetos are inside here. We have these nice quarter twenty round heads, button heads, and yeah, I think those will do fine on this one inch and this would be three quarters of an inch and there'd be a hang countersunk hole in the top and this distance would be one half inch and this distance of the total thing 0.3 so if i and i think that's about right okay so I need to make six things here, and then I'll wrap that size. Uh, let's see what I got. All right, I've got this piece of cast urethane, which is also uh, was poured into a PVC pipe, and I'm going to turn this into the six wound coils on each of the sides of my hexagon. Live center in the back there. Now I want to carve all this down to one inch outside diameter. 1.57, so it's 570 thousandths over one inch, so.
Now I've got six spools just like that, and uh, they look great. I'm gonna put them on my hex. Get that going, and uh, I'll get two opposites going, and then we'll make sure that they actually meet. Yeah, oh, this is looking great! <laughs> and now the question is, does it clear? Oh, just barely does not clear. All right, so I need to soften the edges of all of those. I'm gonna chamfer them all. Okay, uh, I'm sorry I did this off camera, but I was kind of annoyed that I was so close and yet so far. So I uh, actually, I needed a little extra space and rather than shorten these, I actually stepped in here so that I'll still have the same size face, but I get this little extra edge detail there. Uh, so I milled down those six sides and, no, that's basically what, oh, and I chamfered the edges of all these spools. So we're just gonna do a final fit check and if this works, which I hope it does, then we move on to the next step. Okay, there we go. And hey, it spins freely in there. Okay. Oh, right, I wanna put those guys in. It wasn't necessarily a super trivial decision for me to make to not go cannon on this. I considered tearing apart the whole backside of this guy and reworking it. But the fact is, it's not what you're expecting as the viewer. Uh, you know, it, it sells the overall effect really well, this jumble of mechanics and the fact that, you know, the magnetos maybe not exactly on the right side or the belt path isn't identical. That's fine. Back in there. This is a lovely piece. Uh, so we are going to, uh, I'm going to remove it from this and then I'm going to start to, uh, I'm going to give it a basic coat of some black textured paint and then I'm going to wind these with some copper wire and glue them in place and then do some final weathering. All right, operational test. Let's see how we do here. Uh, 12 volts, which is the voltage of this motor. That is great. It's great looking, so let's get it going on the... <laughs> I'm excited about this. Hey, look at that. That is the perfect speed. I am so happy with this. Um, it's not too fast, you can't see it, but it's fast enough that it looks like it's actually doing something. And it's all press fit. I mean, obviously I did a bunch of gluing and screwing, but it's just press fit right in there, which makes it very easy to service and take care of. Awesome, let's, um, I think it's time to paint it, yeah. I have painted the little spools and I'm now going to wire some magneto wire around them for the awesome look. Uh, I'm gonna assembly line this just a little bit. For each one, I'm going to tighten a, uh, is that too long? That is too long. Yeah, that helps actually. Okay, so I got that and I'm gonna drill a little hole for the wire. And then I'm going to chuck it into the drill. This is not quite as super fast as I was hoping, but it will do. And you know what? I need a second drill because, yeah, I'm gonna to wanna to hold that to right there. Indeed, but I think that looks pretty, that looks pretty canon. I'm happy with how that looks. Let's uh, snip it. Excellent. I've got it sunk into two holes, top and bottom. And now I'm gonna glue this. And this is gonna be the off camera side. So I don't have to worry about being nice about the gluing even. 
you can just make it what it is. There you go. The first of the Magnetos is in! Huzzah! there. Thank you. While I finished numbers four, five, and six. And we're making great guns of progress. There's all sorts of shortcuts I'm taking here. I am um, I am not letting my paint dry fully because, again, it's going to get beaten up. I am not worrying too much about that because Aesthetically, I don't have to, but now I think I can, uh, oh, right. I want to do a little bit of rub and buff, uh, rub and buff there. That's great. That's nice and, uh, eh, nice and dirty right off the bat. Uh, so we can start to do some actual assembly here. Great. One last one. And this part of the magneto is almost finished. There we go. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. I've got... Where is that? Rub and buff I was just using. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to get those guys there. <laughs> I'm super happy with that for a couple of hours of work. That, I mean, you know, I've got some nice tools, but yeah, that was quick. Uh, so now it's time to install and dress around it. Oh, right. Let me add uh, some wire leads off of this. Back. Wonderful. Now I can connect those in through here. <laughs> yeah, it's looking great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Beauty. Okay, so now I need to make a cage that goes over this, and I'm going to do that out of Sintra. Magneto is spinning beautifully. I'm really happy with how it looks. It's just great. Yeah, that's awesome. And I've got the little housing for it, which is just a piece of styrene bent on three corners, a little bit of pipe that I cut down and glued in there with crazy glue and some detailing with a uh, little bit of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Come on, I can know the word. Um, 
Oh, right, I forgot a thing. At any rate, we got this going, and I'm very pleased with how it's going. And here is a nice center bearing to look all official like. And I am going to put this on here. It's gonna actually, I wish I'd given myself a little more meat to grab. Great, that worked. Let's go with this one. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to do the last one because I can't get up under. Oh wait, no I can, look at that. Nope, I can't. Uh, so I'm gonna glue that one because it just, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, let's get a tiny bit of detailing on there. A little more rub and buff. And. Yeah, look at that. Nice. All of a sudden, it's like we got an actual thing. Good, okay, Woo. that is the back. Time to move on to the, okay, so uh, the front. That's great, but the front is a more complicated. Ah, hi. <laughs> the front is more complicated. So let's start working on the front. What's going on with you? Okay, I clearly, I think I need to take this thing apart and inspect why it's not powering up. And that's just gonna be a little bit of, a little bit of back and forth. All right, I think I've worked it out. Um, it's a peculiar thing, but it seems that it's got a, a motion sensor in it. And, um, I don't, I don't like not being able to rely on this, but I'll make it removable so I can fix it. Um, I've got a nice rendering of the Mark I that I found, um, and it's pretty good. Uh, I think this is what I'm gonna use as the framework for the light, and I'm actually probably going to, yeah, you know what? I may end up putting a backing behind it yeah, I think that's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make a plate back here, and then I'm going to uh, dress that plate and bring it up to this, right? So here is the open space. And to be clear, uh, no, that's not that one. This, that one. To be clear, um, the original maker had had this piece sitting in here as part of they had this in here for the, for the thing. And it's okay, but I don't think it's as accurate as I want it to be. So I'm gonna, I'm, I may end up cutting this up. Come on. I may end up cutting this up and utilizing part of it, uh, but I'm gonna make a new ring out of this thing. So I think the first step is a piece of aluminum and a way of attaching it in here. Yeah. Okay. The Iron Man Mark I uh, is actually, the arc reactor is protected behind a big thick piece of glass in the Mark I. So I am gonna utilize this uh, piece of what looks like 3 8 inch Plex acrylic uh, as my window. I think that'll help make it look awesome. And uh, I'm heating up a piece of foam PV. I'm gonna, the back here, the backing plate is gonna be a piece of foam PVC, otherwise known as Sintra. And some countries it's known as Sinex. Um, 
a very workable material. And as a YouTuber, it can build almost anything out of it. Uh, yeah, uh, very, very versatile, wonderful model making material, very lightweight, um, easy to heat form. So I've got it in my lab oven heating up to 200, and 200 degrees. Uh, and I'm just gonna put it on a slight curve back here. And then I'm gonna start attaching all of this detailing to it. And that's kind of roughly what I'm following. It's gonna be some blocks of wren shape. Then we're gonna get it all painted and dirtied up. And uh, yeah. It's only 3.30. I got like two and a half more hours for this. All right. Yeah, I don't have any secrets about how to get the paper off of old acrylic. I wish I did. Oh, just patience. That's all it requires. Uh, okay, so that is. I know, I cut this out on, off camera. I apologize. Um, here's what I did. I put this down on the acrylic and drew a pencil line using my mechanical sharp writer number two here. And I drew a very fine line around the perimeter. Then I, on the bandsaw, I cut it out about a 16th inch outside that line. And I sanded it into that line using my disc sander. Um, hell's bells, you could probably just use a um, laser cutter. And I've got one, but this seems to me faster. Let's see here. <laughs> That's what I like. Home sanded interference fits. Yeah, man. This is, I don't have to worry about glue or anything. All right, I've taken my Sintra out of my oven and I'm just trying to give it a gentle curve here. Again, I'm not trying to be too extreme about it. Just this one. Oh! Ah! Uh, woo! All right, so, having a snack while I continue to heat up more of my Sintra to attempt to get to this business. Um, I really am curious if anybody out there has another one of these because the guys that put this together, I feel like it was more than one dude. Um, Cause I paid like 1200 bucks, I think for this full costume. I don't think it was much more than that. And it was a while back. It was like 2007 or something like that. Yeah, it was a while ago. Um, but the way that like, whoever put this together I'm really fascinated by what they did because making molds this big is non-trivial. It's a big deal. Uh, making them work, uh, you know, they, they, they did certain efficiencies, like both shoulders are the same, except one side of one shoulder looks like the right shoulder and the other side of the same shoulder looks like the left shoulder. So when you swap them out, you get shoulders that kind of approximate and the forearms work like that and the, the legs as well. They're bilaterally symmetrical, but there are some differences. And I've been slowly kind of adjusting little bits of this costume ever since uh, I got it, but just a little bit at a time. Um, and it's a really nicely done kit. I mean, it's not that it's a kit, it came mostly painted. I repainted all of it, but like the guys that put it together, they, they're like, they put in a lot of effort. I'm curious if they made some dough. I hope they did. I hope they made, uh, some money with their venture. All right. All right, bending again. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that's better. So um, now what I want to do is I want to, first I'm just going to try and bias so give it a little bit more bend. Easier to take bend out than it is to put it in. Wow, my hair looks so flock of seagulls. And I ran, I ran so far away. I know it's copyrighted. I just ran, but I don't think they would complain. I ran both night and day. So it, it does seem to be tap activated and it goes through three different, three different, 
I know, I probably should have read the manual. I actually think I got that in the garbage. <laughs> okay, um, so how do you want to work? So let's trace this and then I can do some cutting. Oh yeah. Okay, so I want a bunch down there. So I don't think I'm gonna cut anything from there, but from right about like there, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, okay. There's plenty of room for me still in there. Make those two cuts on the uh, bandsaw while you listen. Go ahead, Gunther, put up your subtitle. All right, so now I have the position, and that's great. Now all I need to do, yeah. So it's time to do some hole cutting out of here. How to cut out that hole. Here's a scary way to do it. I wonder if I really want to try that. I actually might, hold on. I'm gonna go with the light drill so that I don't have too much torque. Yeah. I'm taking a very light touch on this. And <laughs> this, this this gigantic steel bit with the carbide inserts. This is like, I wasn't meant to cut foam PVC. You are wasting my talents. Yeah, my machines yell at me and that's what they say. Right, uh, that should be, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Wow, it's also sound activated. I, I guess it maybe plays to music, weird. Um, this is great because, come on, come on. Don't you wanna go home? That's your home. Yes, I am quoting Happy Gilmore. Okay. And that's right there, like that. Yeah! 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 Yo! Wow. I, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, all right. So, um, that's awesome. That's fabulous. I'll figure out how to attach that in there later, but now it's time, now, now it's time to do some of the detail. It's one, two, three, four. So it's one, two, three, four. So this is this big chunk that goes, actually, I think it's even a little bit closer than that. And then there's this, yeah, so it's about a half an inch wide. And that's one piece. And then there's the secondary piece that comes off of that, and it goes. It's so hard to see in the photos, but yeah, there's. Got this business to see, right? So there's wiring up in there and some other stuff, and I've got some, great. Okay, so now I need some wrenching. I'm actually gonna use MDF, yes. Um, a very, very versatile modeling material. This is a type of MDF called TruePan. I believe it's spelled thusly. TruePan. And uh, from what I remember being told, this is made of sustainable 
uh, sustainable young growth wood. It is a fiber, uh, like an MDF, but it's like an LDF. It's a light density fiber board rather than a medium density fiber board. So as you can see, it's not nearly that like kryptonite density of real MDF, which I can't stand. And it's really noxious stuff. It's got a formaldehyde binder. People get allergic to it. It's awful. But this, this is actually, could be great. This could be awesome. So let's see here. Come on, that. Yeah, there we go. That's a reasonable one. I need a compass is what I need. And I need to find center of this circle. How am I going to find center of this circle? Well, I'm going to use a little compass trick here. Which is, I'm going to choose a, choose a random, a random length for my compass. And I draw two semicircles both times with the point on the perimeter of the circle. And when I do that, it creates two points, that one and that one, and those two points go through the center. So I only need to do that like twice. And it really doesn't matter how far apart you space these. If, you're, if, you're, if the point of your compass is on the perimeter, the line that it draws goes through center. So we'll grab a straight edge here, and that's through center. And so is that. Now I can draw some more circles. No more of my John Dunn uh, compass quoting. Oh. I'm not quite perfectly in the center, but I'll follow my pencil lines instead of the... So if that's gonna be a half inch wide, I'm gonna go for... Okay, I'm gonna cut that out. Then there's the secondary piece, which starts there, I think. I'm just gonna... And that one is thinner. Okay, so then I want to do this bit of drawing here. Um, I'm going to cut out, that's one of the cutouts. And then the other cutout is this one. Like that. And then I'm going to just make these little bumps. And I'm hand drawing them because I can. Um, all right, I'm going to do some uh, bandsaw cutting of this and uh, I'll include you in that process. So uh, we are left over with a round piece of MDF. Save this, save this. This is a sacred scrap. This is an important chunk. You will be happy about this chunk later on in your life. All right, uh, I've got the little piece up top. I like that, it's nice. I've got the under piece right here and I've got, I've got that piece there. I'm gonna do some shaping on these guys, but that'll be enough for me to actually start to glue those down and start to add more details. I have my chess piece. I know, 
It doesn't look like much. I get that. I get that it doesn't look like much, but this should be exactly the kind of aestheticizing that I want for the interior of this. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me get it closer so you can see it. There we go. So I am going to paint this whole thing black. Then I'm going to hit it with some, uh, some rub and buff. And then I'm going to add some wiring. And I have some extra pieces of wiring and tubing here. And we're almost done. Um, I'm just going to hit this with some black spray paint. So uh, be back and it'll be in color. Sorry. It'll be a color. The color will be black. Now, um, now I'm going to look through some parts to see about adding a couple little doohickeys to kind of make it look a little interesting. Okay. I think I'm just going to do the rub and buff. The rubbing and the buffing. So this, I don't know if I should use this. I feel like this is a piece of Star Wars stuff, but maybe I should use it. Uh, yeah, I can take that. That's good. So, let's get that in. Uh, I can also take off some of that. The benefits of using aluminum Nothing ages better than aluminum. You hit it with some black paint. See that? Yeah! Yeah! Okay, so apparently when I yell, it also changes. I'm gonna make a couple of cuts on the bandsaw. You'll see what I'm thinking. Again, not a huge deal because it's all just weathering. The stuff is just light enough. That goes there. That goes there. This is removable, but I'm not planning on removing it anytime soon. I am merely holding on to it for a period of time. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So she blows. Yeah, yeah, that is an arc reactor. I dig it. Um, I may do some uh, light fogging out at the edges of this. Uh, that's definitely for sure. Um, but now it's incumbent on me to rub and to buff. So here we go. We have our basic form factor. We're gonna get some some color on this equation. Great, yeah. Instantly, it looks a lot better. I have some of this, which is this really nice flexible hose and I really dig it, so I'm gonna use some of it. Good. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, so now I need some wire. So now I want to fit my newly created fascia piece, and I want to fit it in right here, just like that. Yeah. I'm gonna end up socking this in with glue, but first I need to do a little hot glue just to hold it in place. I know, it's really messy in here and I will take care of that in a minute. I like hot glue for operations like this. It's not permanent, but it holds it in orientation so I can understand it. All right, I'm gonna let that set and we'll take a look at it in a few minutes. Okay, now I have installed a uh, little voltage step-down transformer so that I can feed 12 volts into this, uh, into this suit and the, the arc reactor gets the five volts it needs. So this is a 12 volt to five volt step-down and I'm about to, I'm about to actually connect it up. Come on, great. Okay, so now, Ah, now I have two leads coming from this and they both want 12 volts. So I'm gonna trim them here and strip them. I cut my thumb, cut my thumb and it's not a bad cut, but it's bleeding a lot and it won't stop. I know I could stop, but I don't want to. So I'm not. Uh, so there's that, like that. There, I'm actually gonna make that longer. Okay, I guess I could just put this on, right? I mean, that's really what we're... Yeah, it's time for me to put it on. I keep doing these one day builds where I forget to do the thing that's the purpose of the build in the first place at the end. Example, I made the bullets for my Samaritan gun without putting the bullets in the gun at the end of the video, which everyone wanted to see. I'm really sorry about that. So I recognize I'm making an Iron Man costume. I should be putting it on so we can see it. And that's what I'm gonna do. So here we go. Right? Yeah, you gotta have this. This is like, this is part of the look. And this is one of my actual welding jackets. So I consider it muy authentico. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so where's the other lead? There it is. Okay, here's my two leads. I'm gonna twist them together. Ten, eleven, twelve. So now I should have the there we go! Oh hey! I gotta stop the sound activation. It's like the con's gonna make it go crazy. All right, no, but you wanna see the other side too. Wait, how do you get to see that? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I can't spin around. Okay, I am really, hang on. I am really happy with how this part of my Iron Man Mark I looks. I like the, the feel of this stuff, the wiring, the, uh, the arc reactor, it's got depth to it. Oh, 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 okay. So let's, um, here's what we're gonna do. I wanna show you the back. So I am gonna show you the back and that's doing this thing, right? Yeah. Spin this around. Yeah! Right? <laughs> Just a little bit of extra cosplay goodness for my Iron Man Mark I. I think there'll be more builds on this Mark I as we proceed with, uh, with what? As we proceed with time? <laughs> I do believe, I love this suit. Uh, I have not yet worn it at a con and it is. it will be time soon. I have to add in these little connectors here. I've got some forearm stuff to do with some flamethrower effects. And uh, yeah, I'm having a pretty good time. My Iron Man suit is coming along. Thank you guys for joining me for this quickie. One day build.
Yeah, I think that's everything. I will see you next time. Cheers. Hi, I thought I was done, but I'm not done. Uh, I had so much fun working on my uh, Iron Man Mark I chest piece that I broke out all the other pieces. And here's the thing, this suit is bulky as heck. Uh, it takes up like four containers and it has always sat in a kind of a mound in storage or here at the cave. And in order, it's like if I'm gonna progress with this piece, I'm gonna need to see how the pieces relate to each other and I can't just keep putting them on because I have to look in a mirror, et cetera. I need to build a stand for it. That's the next thing that's gonna happen. But I'm going to build this stand using a technology that just happens to be here. But this is effectively an armor stand, the same kind of stand I built for the suit of armor I built with Terry English in which he showed me, he instructed me in many of the ways of armor making. I'm going to be building a, a kind of a, a, an adjustable armor stand for my Iron Man Mark I. And I'm going to use, oh, those of you out there who have kids, you know that you know when your kid expresses an interest in something, you wanna put it in front of them. You, you, want to, you want to create the intersections that will yield passion and interest and thus knowledge and facility and a point of view. That's, that's your job as a parent. And you know, I, my kids are both accomplished musicians and Thing One specifically started out as a drummer and a bassist. He's now a, a guitarist mainly, but still can play the drums. Anyway, this right here, is pieces of his old Yamaha electronic drum set, which is long gone, but the stand itself, those are all a bunch of adjustable angles for a fairly beefy set of aluminum rods. And I've got some of the aluminum and I've got some of the pieces. So I'm gonna build an armor stand using my kid's old drum set. Boom. Um, first things first is to make a rolling platform. So I've got some three quarter inch CDX ply. I'm gonna build a platform out of that. I'm gonna build an upright coming off of that and the upright will support the armor and then we're gonna start, we're off to the races with the drum kit. The rolling part of the rolling platform is gonna be super straightforward. I've got a bunch of these little red two inch wheels. Um, <clears throat> wheels are something you should have in your shop. You should have a lot of them and there's no excuse not to because I think, I think I bought these on eBay. I think I bought 24 of them for a couple bucks a piece. Yeah, um, I, you don't have to buy in the bulk that I do. That's my neuroses. But uh, just suffice to say, if you do a search on eBay for casters, C-A-S-T-O-R-S, casters, am I right about that? Or is it E-R-S? My spelling is gone. At any rate, if you do a search for casters, lot, L-O-T, um, you'll often find, as I have, um, giant tranches of awesome casters that have been used and decommissioned and they're plenty fine for you and me. Uh, so I'm going to figure out the size of my pair of boots standing on the ground and the center of gravity that I want them to have. And I'm gonna put four wheels in the corners and figure out how to mount one of these pipes. It's the light touch. The thing that I keep having to learn about this stuff, can I watch the videos of the Japanese woodworkers doing everything with that saw and big pieces of lumber? It's less is more, take less, use less strength. Use the force, yeah. This is my best saw. It's the best saw in this building. That's why it says, only Adam uses this saw. And that, it's a really nice cut. I'm very pleased with how straight that cut is. A little bit of waviness, but not much more than like 20 thou. Why did, why did I cut out this block? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I cut this block out because it's gonna glue and screw to the stand and hold on to the main pipe. 
<clears throat> yeah. It's not pretty. It doesn't have to be. All right, uh, let's get to the gluing and, gluing and screwing part of the equation. Already inspired. I'm already like, man, he just needs to live back there and be awesome all the time. Yeah. coming along <coughs> and he's gonna make more progress now that he's living upright he's living the he's living the dream he's living the life he should be living Iron Man Mark one okay thanks guys I will see you next time
Thanks for watching that video. If there's a video equivalent of the Clean Plate Club, you're a member. Uh, if you want to support us, one of the best ways you can do it is going to our merch store and purchasing one of our beautiful new posters. This is my hand-drawn sketch of uh, my two toolboxes that I used when I was an active model maker at Industrial Light and Magic in the late 90s and the early aughts. There's also on the far left side of the poster a list of all of the tools I had in these toolboxes and I use them daily for almost a decade. Again, you can get your own version of this printed on a beautiful cardstock by following the links below.